did this ourselves. They're coming. It can't be. Where is everyone? Hey, survivors, welcome back to the Apocalypse Postcast, a podcast. I'm your host, Makeshift, and we have a very special report coming for you this week because it was just announced that a Waterworld sequel television series is in the works. There's not a whole lot of information out there, so I tracked down a couple of the biggest Waterworld fans I could possibly find in the world to help chat about this and come up with some ideas for what this show could possibly be. First off, let me introduce again to you, the interpreter. Welcome to the show. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming back on. And of course, from last week's episode, Mickey Bang Bang. Welcome back, buddy. Hey, what's up? So guys, how excited are you about this announcement? I'm very excited, actually. Ex extremely oh, why are you raising excited. your hand? Extremely excited. Oh, I was gesturing. I wasn't even raising my hand. <laughs> I'm extremely exciting. Excited. Yeah. So, um, let me are first start. Exciting? Off, uh, I, Mickey Bang Bang is exciting. Let's get that out of the way. Truth, truth be told. One life and so already, far. Um, in case anyone's wondering, this is how the whole show is going to go. <laughs> Not wrong. Bad. <laughs> so oh, got your um, jock straps yeah. on tight. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Everyone was already commenting about how much they love how much you were laughing at everything last week, Mickey Bang Bang. Oh, wait, is that is that not part of the show? Don't you, That's part don't of the you, show. Don't you, don't you people normally you're, laugh around here? <laughs> you're a perfect guest for that, and so are you, interpreter. You guys ha both have amazing laughs. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. I, and then I, meanwhile, like I'll, I'll be your Ed McMahon. <laughs> meanwhile, I <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I, I was all stuffed up last week. I still kind of am. I don't know why this thing won't go away. It could be the COVID. It's um, not. I hope not. Um, but I'm listening to my laugh and I'm like, uh, uh, just making these weird noises. <laughs> just like, what is happening? You're just like throat clicking. <laughs> clack, clack, clack. Yeah. Yeah. That's and like inhale favorite. laughing. <laughs> <laughs> so basically every... Uh, entertainment media outlet came out with the exact same story. You know how they all report on on the report and they're just like re re refurbishing. No, that's not the word. Rephrasing, regurbishing. Re what is it when you regurgitating? Like, regurgitating. They're all regurgitating the same information. I um, really like refurbishing. All, re yeah. Well, I wish they would refurbish it because they keep making it worse rather than better. Well, that's what we're um, here to do. Exactly. And so the news is. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a Waterworld sequel coming. It's going to be in the form of a TV show. Um, all we know is John Davis, who produced the original movie, is back on to produce the series. We know he's doing it along with John Fox, whoever he is. I don't know. I don't know if he has any involvement in it. And um, it's going to take place 20 years after the ending of Waterworld and hopefully be following these same characters 20 years later. So that's what we've got. They don't have a streaming site yet. It's probably going to be Peacock because it's tied to Universal. Um, and they don't have a writer yet that's going to come in the next few weeks. So they must have like just this general idea of what they want. You know, maybe bullet pointed out, maybe like, you know, just a, a very quick like, you know, these, these characters are going to do this, this and this. Uh, and they're going to bring in a writer, flesh it out. So, so any thoughts so far, guys? They're holding auditions for the writer? Um, that's probably exactly what they're doing is is talking to a bunch of like writing agents, trying to get someone on board, figuring out, you know, all the contracts and stuff and who's going to be the best to do it. Well, that's and... suspenseful now. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Because <laughs> here's the thing, like if they go with like a spec writer, you're going to end up with something really vanilla. If they get, yeah. you know, like a big movie writer, <clears throat> they might get something amazing. It's It's got to kind of... I feel like it's going to need to kind of walk a fine line between vanilla TV and the whole grim dark thing. Like <laughs> it can't, it, it's, it's already like dark enough. I feel like a grim dark take would just be like way too much. Cause it's like, dude, this, the, the whole world is flooded. Like this, this shit sucks already. Like <laughs> how much worse can you make it? And they're like, Oh, we can make it worse with, it'll be like game of Thrones on the ocean or some shit. <laughs> game, game of seas. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. And did you guys know that the that Waterworld, the movie, had a lot of writers? So it was based on an original spec script. Um, 
I think I went over this in in another in that video essay I made. Um, I'm not going to remember all the names right now, but it had an original writer. It was very sci-fi, like like there were legitimate like mutated fish people. Like Kevin Costner, he had gills and he had webbed toes, and that was kind of it. <laughs> and people are born with webbed toes, anyways. That's but, true. Yeah, but, it's not but that. The, crazy. But the original was like more yeah. like like street sharks or whatever, like just like. I think mean, so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very sci-fi. It had a whole like. I I think there was um, <clears throat> oh shoot, what's his name? The God of the Ocean. Um, Poseidon. Oh, yeah, I think like Poseidon yeah. was. Yeah, one or the other, yeah. depending on you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. side of the Mediterranean you're <laughs> yeah, from? <laughs> <correct>. <laughs> um, I think like it that was involved and it was just like just take Waterworld and amp it up to like cartoon levels exactly like 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 street sharks. <laughs> um, but then when they went to actually make it into a movie, they wanted something more Mad Max ish. And so they kind of like humanized it, like brought it back down to the real world and we got water world. Um, but even when they started filming, um, the, the writing just wasn't ready. Like Kevin Costner jumped in and he was like, I'm going to write some scenes. <laughs> I mean, Kevin... it's that middle-aged white man confidence though. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> I wish and I had was... that. <laughs> And and that was Kevin Costner at his peak when he was like, they said, uh, <laughs> Kevin Costner gets to work with his favorite director and favorite actor because they're both him it's all or Kevin something Costner, like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's all Kevin Costner. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it is, it has like a special place in, in my, my childhood heart because like Waterworld is basically like when he made Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, but it's like Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves on the ocean. You know, he still gets to be like, yeah. The, yeah. like the sullen, tough, tough guy who's like, you know, blah blah blah. He's he's kind of a jerk. Oh, totally. But, but he, you know, and that's another one of my favorite films. Features. Yeah, totally. Right? Yeah, Kevin Costner was crushing it, um, which is part of the reason he got this role as the Mariner. Uh, and did you notice his career kind of like tapered? <laughs> Well, he, I was wondering when he did the Postman, because wasn't that when it was like, oh, why did you it was, do that? Postman was like what ninety eight, I think it was. It was after Waterworld. Um, I, yeah, I think if, it was. Yeah, because he was doing real well, and then oh. well, see, here, here's here's the thing. You want if you want to talk about the Postman, uh, Postman, the novel was written by a guy named David <laughs> Grimm, and the novel is like wildly different than that movie, um, because there, there's a, in that same novel, there's a lot of like the 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 antagonists. We're the, they're the same antagonist in the movie, but they're different in the book because they're like genetically modified super soldiers, and they don't they're they're just like racist weird bigots in the movie. So it doesn't like they're they're like racist in the book, but they're like racist because they're like genetically modified super soldiers from like the war. That's or crazy. Whatever. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's it's actually the, the book is like really 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 different than the movie. Um, Whoa, Sounds yeah, that makes right. sense. Well, the postman, it, it felt like. For me, the postman could have just been a western. Like, don't even make it post-apocalyptic. Right. It could just be a western. Yeah, and because, yeah, because they they like hardly address the they, the one thing that I that I did like. I mean, let's let's be real. The, probably the best part of that movie was Tom Petty being like, you remember <laughs> yes. Tom Petty being a cameo, and when he's like, "Oh, why are you here?" Blah blah blah. Like, what you know? What? Why are you the leader of this of this group? And he's like, "Because I know I know things. I know how to do things." And like that, that right there, I think that was like the crux of the whole movie because it's like, oh yeah, like you could be all shooting McBullet face and have like all the guns and all the, the bunkers you want, but like, do you know how to know things? Do you know how to like build things? And, shooting and, McBullet face. Do you, do you know how to farm and fix things and like make clothes and, and that kind of shit? Like, I don't know. So I was just thinking, cause you mentioned that this was a huge part of your childhood and something uh, when I was watching your video makeshift, you were talking about the ice caps melting and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it just reminded me of how our childhood, we had a, like, we had Waterworld, Captain Planet, and we were just raised a lot. <laughs> like, yo, Planet. the world's coming to an end. We need to take care of it. We need to do these things. And I'm oh, like, yeah. And so I'm like, talking to younger generations, they have no idea what Captain Planet is unless they watch the, yeah. I think, Don Cheadle. Dude, like YouTube okay. videos, the humor, yeah, the, the, the <laughs> sketch like, comedy. What, okay. bit. <laughs> it was but, so but, bad. But with Captain Planet, okay, they had the they had the elements, right? They had earth, like Earth, Fire, Wind, and Water. But then then the heart fifth one was heart. And, heart. and I was all like, as a kid, I was like, well, what is heart? Like, what is that? And it's like, love. Well, it's just, 
It's the it is. It's, it's the same thing as from the Fifth Element. Bruce Willis's Fifth Boom. Element. It is the Fifth. It element. was love. It's hard. Yo, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So so maybe Fifth Element Did you know- and Captain Planet exist in the same like thematic universe and i think we just like we just solved the world's problems because that's obviously now famous. you're catching on mickey bang bang now <laughs> well, I mean, you I'm get see- the full I'm picture seeing, yes i'm seeing through the looking glass you guys <laughs> i mean if you if you want to be blown even further have you looked at the kids from captain planet and then looked at the kids from the magic school bus and it's pretty much the same cast from the magic school oh, bus i don't, as th- it is I don't think I've, i don't think i've ever made that they're comparison. just younger yeah, it's oh like them, them younger with Miss Frizzle, and then they get older into Captain Planet. So okay, that but could I, be... I have this yeah. weird, like, three personal grudge. Yo. I got this weird <laughs> personal grudge against, like, with I love... With everything? No, the Magical School Bus, the, the, <laughs> the, the, the books were great, but, like, the cartoon really, really teased me off, because when I was a kid, there was, an, there was one episode that, like, ruined it for me, and it was the episode where they talk about erosion. And they're, like, dis- they're, like discussing erosion and how, how stone and, and stuff gets eroded over time and at some point they the bus shrinks down and they're like in a riverbed and the 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 bus turns into a rock because they're they're learning about stone erosion and all of a sudden they're like oh no the bus is getting eroded and there's like these boulders like bouncing down the riverbed hitting the bus and like threatening to like destroy it and and even as a kid when i watched it i was like that's not fucking how erosion works like that's not there's not boulders rolling down a riverbed, <laughs> smashing into a shrunken down bus that's now a rock. Like, what the fuck is really pissed me off? And like forever so after you're that. Upset. You're upset that a cartoon about kids in a bus and the bus would shrink. They were trying. They were going, trying. You're upset that it's I'm upset not that they, accurate. I'm upset that they taught erosion incorrectly because erosion is actually a very serious geological problem. <laughs> this is a school bus that they put it into a pill and people <laughs> ingested it. <laughs> No, you're right. You're right. I, I understand your <laughs> anger. <laughs> oh my god! You know what, Mickey is Bang really Bang? Important, dude. <laughs> it is. You're you're not wrong, but I'm going to steer us back <laughs> to Waterworld. Yeah. <laughs> to, to also, where, back on topic. Where I was going with this is, I was thinking if the, the show, if younger generations pay attention to it, are they actually going to pay attention to the ice caps melting? And with our generation, and then that younger generation, are we going to be able to? not die <laughs> you, that's a really good point point. and so most post-apocalypse movies stories they they always center on whatever the pop news is at the time whatever we're most afraid of at the time so mm-hmm. in the 90s of course it was um it, it was global warming we were just learning about climate change uh and so water world was kind of the you know what happens in the future if we don't fix anything of course you know we're still we, we didn't fix anything um, before that in the nineties, <laughs> of course we were coming out of the cold war. So that's where Mad Max comes out of is the fear of, of atomic war, like worldwide atomic war. Um, and today, of course we have a whole new slew of problems to deal with. And are they going to be able to tie this into this new water world series? What do you think? Like, is there going to be, I don't know, uh, an outbreak of, <laughs> of is there going to be COVID? Is there going to be COVID in Waterworld? <laughs> right. Probably. But of course you can still use it as a metaphor, right? <clears throat> or, or. I mean, if they're going to do it accurate to what actually happens when the polar ice caps melt, then there's going to be a lot of disease that's going around just because there's a lot of diseases that are alive in the ice caps. And as the ice caps are melting, those diseases are being released and free. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I yeah. hadn't thought about that. <laughs> I mean, so that's not, where my brain to, yeah, goes to. <laughs> not to mention yeah. the fact that, that that when those diseases would be there or other diseases, like there's no medical facilities. You know, the, the atoll doesn't, <laughs> right. doesn't have a right. clinic. There's nobody making well, suppose, antibiotics. Yeah. I, su- I suppose that, you know, in the world of Waterworld, if there are still atolls out there, um, they're, they the atolls are socially distanced, so maybe, like, one would be eradicated, but then that would be the end of it, probably. Um, but we're also going to be following some people on land. Now, they are, at the end of Waterworld, spoilers coming up, <laughs> if you so, haven't seen this 30-year-old seen- movie. <laughs> <laughs> if you never had cable, t- or, uh, what is it, t- uh antenna television as a kid <laughs> exactly yeah they did find dry land and so a, a few survivors were able to um to <clears throat> kind of continue civilization on dry land whereas before everybody was on the water um and um if you watch the ulysses cut you would know that this is the top of mount everest the highest place on earth which 
also says that there's probably no other dry land because if if Mount Everest is the only thing peaking, there's nothing else quite at its scale. It right? depends on what elevation, like where, because they never get into the details of like what part of Mount Everest, like how far up Mount Everest does that go? Well, I mean, if, if it wasn't the highest, wouldn't they be able to see? Well, I guess it could be behind the island and theoretically. I mean, but. because it, like, like just say that, that it was the water only went up to like the base of Mount Everest. Well, there's plenty of uh, other mountain ranges that are like, around that size you know th- there's no nothing i think it was the top Everest. though i think we're talking was the it top. supposed to be like the very peak of it like the very yeah we're, we're like we're talking the the iceberg tip of mount I Everest mean, in, in that in that case for, first of all and i'm no climatologist <laughs> or whatever but like if, if that's the case Sorry. just the tip just the tip um i would also really be curious I didn't about, say it out loud i just mouthed it <laughs> oh jesus Jesus Christ. Hey, you guys invited me here on purpose. Any, I just want that anyway. for the record to show. <laughs> You're the best of us, interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> So you're talking about the tip. Keep going. Okay. So if it is just the tip of Mount Everest, then yeah, I mean, ostensibly there wouldn't be a whole lot of land other than that, but that's also discounting the idea that there isn't other further geological change. Like what if, what if along with the, true. the rising floodwaters, there was some sort of tectonic plate shift and that was, they were parallel or causal or something like that, where like maybe a new mountain range formed. And that's why, and like, <laughs> there, you know what I mean? Like, or maybe, maybe we, you know, there's some sort of like a uh, 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 global catastrophe, you know, that, that we don't, because, because they never get into, they, you know, it's assumed that it's global warming, but it's also like, we know that global warming isn't just like a straight one, one issue kind of thing. Like it's, it's like a multifaceted problem that affects a whole bunch of different things. So in addition to the polar ice caps melting, like what if it's something completely, you know, I, like that runs parallel to that. So my question is, don't islands float? What? No, no, they don't float. <laughs> what? what the? Wait, Hawaii, what, what like Hawaii? Hawaii, like, like, Hawaii does not Hawaii float. Hawaii does not float. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait I actually did not pay attention a lot in uh, school. Oh my god! Oh, no, you know that. I, I, I had heard. Fly. I had heard rumors that there were people on the internet that believed <laughs> islands float. I didn't know I'd ever meet one. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay. No. Here. Okay. Here's speaking of islands and shit. Here's here's a, speaking of islands and prescient like current issues. Here's what's gonna happen. Here's my prediction oh, is that they're going to somehow work in the Pacific trash guyer into this whole thing so that, you know, the giant yeah, island fun. of trash that we have in yeah. the ocean right now, that's maybe, maybe they'll be like, Oh, that's like the mega atoll that like somebody made like the, <laughs> n- the new Atlantis on because they were like, well, this is all floating. We might as well just like build platforms on it and just like, it's, it's all here. <laughs> that's hilarious. It's not and going speaking anywhere. of which I would, I I loved the atoll. I lo- like I think that that set up Waterworld so perfectly that that was so early in the movie because now you have this society of people surviving with like this new social structure um being created. It was very tribal um but you know it it showed the best of like how survivors could continue life on this on this world by recycling their their garbage i don't know how the hell it floats i mean it's a bunch of steel dude how could they make it Um, (laughs) okay how could they make it not leak so let's go back to people believing stuff on the internet i just (laughs) looked up do islands float um a floating island is a mass of floating aquatic plants mud and peat uh peat ranging in thickness from several uh, centimeters to a few meters floating islands are a common natural phenomenon that are found in many parts of the world they exist less commonly as an artificial phenomenon Yo, islands float. Not all of them, but some Less of them. You literally, said the, you literally said Hawaii. Well, I mean, that was an example of my brain being like... <laughs> so I'm going to start a GoFundMe where we're going to put a big motor, like an engine on one side of Hawaii, the big island in Hawaii. We're going to drive okay. it around. Just move it. Move it around. So, yeah, hey, we're going to move it closer support- to the mainland so it's easier <laughs> to get to. No, let's, let's not move it closer to the mainland because people are going to Hawaii and... Like the natives are not even being able to survive. Let's take it away farther away from the mainland to give the Hawaiian na- natives. Well, just a give, the, give the natives the keys and be like, "You guys, you guys yeah. drive the island yeah. wherever this you want." This is yours 
again. This is, this your- is your again. Yeah, this is yours yeah. again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We're giving you your land back. And it's just like this little like two horsepower outboard <laughs> motor. <laughs> you get like it's like it's like half a mile an hour. Like you baby. I but feel then like that's can- fast though. Yeah. Um so guys. I'm sorry, the, back to what you guys were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to be partly you know, right. <laughs> water world. <laughs> you are part you are partly partly right. I'll take it. Half but, a win's a win. But but still so wrong. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um so yeah, I love the idea of there being more atolls out there because in in water world, the you know, the 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 uh, oh shoot the deacon uh, ask why there aren't more atolls. And one of his followers is like, well, we sank a few. And so it's like, you know, over time, there's no more supply. So whatever people had when the last land went underwater, that's what you've got. And then if you find some things floating, like a floating trash island, maybe you can collect some of that and like use it. I get, and that's, you know, what the atollers have been doing for hundreds of years. So I love the atoll. I hope there are more stories to be found. Obviously, when the mariner left Mount Everest Island, he went back to the ocean. So he might turn up some more of these. Would you guys like to see some more atoll action? I mean, there there ha- there has to be, there, there there has to be because I mean, you're going to have the one, you know, the land thing and probably some boat action. But like, you know, there's going to be a different atoll, and it's probably going to be like a bigger one because it, it. What we don't see in the original Water World is we don't see like, um like na- nation states per se, you know right. what I mean? Like the atolls are kind of like their own like city, like walled city deals that are, you know, obviously not super connected. And, and the smokers are like the only like large scale organization that we see. Um, but I mean, it, my, okay. My question is though, returning to the original uh, water world with the atoll there, if you guys like in the deleted scenes and the regular theatrical release, they have a fucking mango tree. Like where did they get right. that tree? What what is they have that a tree. tree? And the tree is 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 rooted in the Dookie water tank, which like you know like they, <laughs> right. where they're all the like oh water. you're, you're going to get recycled and like I swear to God like right. I I I can like when he when he goes down underneath it and comes back up and like the slime is like dripping off his face and it's like getting in his mouth. All I can think about is just like dude straight like straight up like you're you're swimming around in like fish diarrhea like that's that's just like everybody's poo <laughs> and yeah. he's and and yeah. she's just like. She's like asking, you like, can, love you, can germs. you? Yeah, and she's like, can you get us out of here? And he's just like, just get me out of the shit water, lady. Like, I'll take you <laughs> wherever you want, you know? Like, just get me out of here. I never thought of it that way. I knew it wasn't. I knew it wasn't clean, and I knew it wasn't pleasant. But I never oh, thought of it as just like if, this <laughs> big old. If, if you worked in, if, yeah, if you worked in waste management at all, like you, you know a reclamation <laughs> pond when you see one. Like that, that, that is a that is a pond of shit for sure. Hundred percent. Oh, good God. So I'm intrigued with the location because you guys are talking about Everest, but from what I've been hearing um, or like predictions wise is with global warming and if that like with the ice caps melting, they're talking about uh, Russia being the perfect place to go because as things are heating, that climate because it's so cold is actually going to be the most desirable place and where we are in the United States and everything is just going to get hotter and hotter. And so that's where I'm like, hmm. Well, that's true. So, um. Yeah, Waterworld, like the, the the whole premise behind Waterworld of the world being a deluge, of it being all water, just doesn't happen. There's not enough water to do it, even with all the ice caps melting. Yeah. You know, we, we would see a percentage of our land uh, underwater, but there's always going to be land mass because there's just not, there's not, you know, a mile of water to go around. Um, but yeah, as things melt, people will move inland. Um, you know, this is kind of the, the the fabricated world of of water world. So as the oceans rise, people move in. Did you guys? All right. So I don't think I mentioned it in my essay, but the city where he takes Helen, where Mariner takes Helen underwater to see, that was Denver. And oh, really? Yeah. How did that I not know that? was the city of Denver, which is the Mile High City. Rookie. So, um, so what's kind of fun is there's this um, this video out there where it shows the art of that city before they put all the effects on it and just how much detail went into it. And it's really wild because um, Denver became a beach town at one point in Waterworld's history. Those though, all the um, all the businesses that were there were like erased. And then it would be like Joe's surf shack or like something, something (laughs) seafood Um, because it's showing 
the history of, you know, the water came up the West Coast and maybe, you know, it probably didn't get over the, the mountains at this point, but the whole East Coast is probably all underwater at this point, yeah. all the way to Denver, which is now a beach town as the um, as the mountains become like the last place to to stay out of the water. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, we're talking hundreds of years of melting. So the water's just been working its way up and Denver became a beach town. I thought that was a really cool detail I, that got left out of the movie. Yeah, that's crazy. I, I never realized that. And like, I, I live in Denver. That makes that makes me sad, but I didn't even know that. <laughs> um, but OK, here's here's a little here's a little tidbit for you. Um, the Mile High City. The only part that's like the, the, the official like mile high spot is like one uh-huh. of the steps on the Capitol building. So it's like right in the middle of the staircase that goes up to the front of the Capitol building. That that is like fifty two eighty. That is like a mile high. So the rest oh, of the, the the rest of the city is kind of like varying degrees of of you know oh, higher yeah, and course. lower than that. Because like my my apartment is about three blocks away from that building, and so like my apartment is technically like a few hundred feet above mile high. Like. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, no, that's and, cool. And in fact, I'm sure the Mariner floated past my apartment and waved at me, like in the movie. You know, if you, yeah, if you, if you watch, definitely. there's a deleted scene where there's like, there's my building and then there's the diner next to it. And he's like, hey, hey, Mickey Bang Bang. And I'm like, what's up? Like Squid, you know, Squidward or Spongebob <laughs> With or something. snorkel gear. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... <laughs> Man, keeping you guys on track is like. <laughs> yeah, good I, I, I literally it's thought this is why I was at it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. All right, so um, so we have our survivors that made it onto the island. There's Enola. There's Helen. There's the Enforcer, who doesn't really have a name. Um, and there's uh, 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 the the scientist fellow. What's his name? Gregor. Help me out, somebody. Gregor, um, was anyone else there? I don't. I think that was everybody. There was no in in the Ulysses cut. There was like a handful of other like unnamed survivors. There okay. was like there was like okay. a woman, and I think there was a there was like a hand, there was like two women. I don't remember. You, you, but like the, in the in the scene where they kick him out, where they have a little meeting after his ship burns, and they have a little meeting of the survivors from the atoll. Yeah. In that, but that's only the small boats, like the new tiny atoll, like yeah. the be- we're we're starting over. But I don't think they all made it to the island. Oh, because it was only who made it to the island. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So so we have this handful of survivors on the island. We do have a few of the survivors still in that mini atoll. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, they're as good as dead. Yeah. Because they didn't. They had nothing. And now you're talking like two or three of them trying to work together without the enforcer and without Gregor. So they don't have a whole a whole lot of chance, but they are still out there. They they could still play, but I mean those those actors were basically playing uh, exaggerated extras. So who knows? Yeah. So we have our survivors on on the island. We have the mariner who went back on his boat. We don't have bad guys. So who's going to be the bad guy? I think the people that made it to the land are going to be the bad guys. Because in my head, there's people that are already living there and they're natives. And then there's these new people coming <laughs> and they're like, yo, this is mine now. And they're there's not no gonna... natives there. Well, I guess How, we don't, there we don't know be... if there's people living there, though. There were no, horses. We don't. There we were don't. wild horses. There were wild horses. <laughs> um, yeah. That's a good song. Um, that's a good point because the island is bigger than it shows in the end of Waterworld. So there could be another, you know, some more survivors. Yeah. Um, but the fact that when they get there, Enola's parents' um, hut was empty and dusty kind of makes me think that there's no one at least in their area. Um, does, does that make sense? Yes. Cause they would have at least, someone would have at least scavenged for that stuff. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I mean, huts are hard to come by. <laughs> yeah. Pred- prediction. Um, yeah. I think because we don't ever see him explicitly killed on screen. I think Jack Black survives. <laughs> and, and i'm I, hoping for this <laughs> yeah no i'm i am like i'm banking on like if they don't just have him in a cameo he's gonna be like a like a character because why why would you not have jack that's like it's like the best jack black movie ever made like hands down um that's and, actually and, a really good point point. and you don't see him die that the, you know the, the pilot you you assume that all the smokers die because they blow you know they blow up the valdez and and um, it sinks and everything, but they don't ever show explicitly that like all the, the, the major players die except for, uh, the Deacon and what's the, the blonde haired guy, the, the angry guy, the British guy. Right. Oh shoot. I always forget his name. I'm, it's so funny. Cause like no one has 
a name. <laughs> they're all they're all just like, they're all like this title. and that, like the I can't thing. Remember. I'm um, not good for names. But, I but can't you know, remember the, names the, there's, there's the extended scene with Jack Black, and he does like that. He chews the scenery and and like acts his little heart out. Um, and then that's it. You don't see the pilot anymore. Now they they crash the plane in the last scene, but he's nowhere to be seen. The deacon, because remember the deacon tries to uh, uh, drive the he tries to fly away with Enola in the plane, and then. Kevin Costner throws the little grappling hook on their on their landing right. gear and like yanks it off and then do 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 you know all that shit. <laughs> yeah, that was the Nord. Nord played by Jared Murphy. I wonder he if he's still alive. But that, yeah, he's that was his dead. name, the Nord. The just Nord. Yeah. yeah uh, unfortunately, he, he, did, he, he died about eight years ago. Yeah. The actual actor died. Yeah. Oh shit. Well, because yeah. the, the, yeah, the character. I mean, he like he like ran the the that car they had into like a pole or something, didn't he? That's right. Yeah. Well, then he showed up to get sh- to get killed later too. Yeah. He died like three times in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. Here's here's another fun thing. Um, did you guys know that there's a comic book series that is kind of a sequel to the Waterworld? No, I didn't to know Waterworld. That. Yeah. I there only know it because we mentioned it before we started. <laughs> What's that? Who's, I only who's... know because we were talking about it before we started. Oh yeah. <laughs> um. Shoot. Who who published it? It was done by. Is it Dark Horse? Um, Valiant. Oh, Acclaim Comics by oh, okay. Valiant Comics. Okay. Uh, and it was under it was licensed by Universal, so you know that it's you know probably canon. Um, and it does. Here, here, let me give you the overview. This comes from Waters Dash and Dot Fandom dot com. I think it's a Waterworld Wiki. Um, and yeah, so there was a four issue comic book series, which is pretty common. And actually, uh, Mad Max Fury Road did this exact same thing, but they did it as a prequel. Um, Here's the overview they give. The comic expands on the possible cause of the melting of the polar ice caps and worldwide flood. The comics also reveal some of the Mariner's backstory as he further explores Waterworld and gathers clues about where he came from and why he's different. The comic hits at the possibility that the Mariner's mutation may not be caused by evolution, but by genetic engineering, and that his origins may be linked to those of the Sea Eater, which is the sea monster seen during the fishing scene in the film. The comic also introduces the foundation, the remnants of the United States government who are living in an underwater bubble and also introduces new villains, the children of Leviathan, Leviathan, Leviathan. I don't know, it's biblical Leviathan. Thank you. Who are led by the Leviathan. That's weird. Oh, maybe he is the Leviathan like it's in quotes and who supplied the Deacon's smoker organization. So here's the thing. The smokers were bad, but these guys sound worse. There's like a bigger bad, a bigger bad. I mean, that's how you have to do sequels, right? You have to yeah, do oh, a yeah. bigger bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you have to you have to do a bigger bad. And then the the original bad guys have to suddenly become allies. That's that's how they exactly. always do it with corny, <laughs> corny action sequels. Yeah. But here's what's really cool about. I I hope that they use some of this because what it does is it expands the world beyond the water and the island. Now you have what is basically people living in desolate survival and you add this new like bubble civilization where there can be some technology. There can be a whole lot of more, a whole lot more characters. Um, and of course, by having this big bad, this bigger bad, um, it gives us a whole new thing to like be fighting against. Yeah. A mutual I- enemy. It, yeah. it it makes sense in as much as is the 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 mariner doesn't seem like he would be a product of evolution because there are no other it it, it doesn't really indicate that there are like a lot of other mutations like his and right. so it's like it's like if you came from like guild people genetics like where are all the other people with gills and like where where on the exactly. island no, why would they be on the island? <laughs> they have gills. They have gills. Why would they be on the island? They're, because, they're under the floating island. Un- unless, because unless, you don't... unless they live underwater, unless, unless he like he's the descendant of Snorks. Do you guys remember Snorks? Yeah, like, but just he, because you can walk do doesn't mean you snorks. don't want to swim yeah. sometimes. Like just because you can swim doesn't mean <laughs> you don't want to walk. He's actually a snork. Um but he, <laughs> that's, I mean, but here's here's logical. the thing. Like where where did where did he come from? You know, and like that that that's why like something like you know, the the vestiges and the remnants of, of the American government, like, doing genetic experimentations to, like, whatever. That makes sense. I mean, it makes oh, sense. Yeah, that's on par. That, makes, that well, makes more sense. Like, people don't, like, creatures don't evolve that quickly. Like, the the, the, the evolutionary window for, the, for, like, something like gills and webbed feet to be a consistent thing, like, that, I don't think that's, like, enough time. Although I'm not an evolutionary biologist, it's just, 
you know. Yeah. And, and I think that this whole other group of survivors that could be out there also kind of lends to um, our, our always theme of, you know, there's the rich and there's the poor and the rich might have like been able to buy their way into this bubble civilization or, or bubble civilizations, but the poor would have had to survive on their own. And that's where all these atollers and smokers come from is, is from the people that literally when the, when the tides were raising, finally had to take what they could build boats or find boats and, and tread out to the water. They had to give up on the land. Meanwhile, there's this whole like civilization of maybe uh, political elites and scientists and um, you know, the highly educated and the rich that are living in this oxygen pumped bubble below the ocean, because that was the other solution was not to head out to the water, but to actually keep the water out of like a certain city, perhaps, you know? Yeah. Denver was not included in that. Denver was not included (laughs) in that (laughs) for obvious reasons. I, I, that that makes sense that somebody was supplying the smokers because like, I always find it interesting that, that of all things, the smokers like base their identities around cigarettes are not waterproof, like at all. Like, They're not. At, at all. And so, like, I, I feel like of all things to survive a, a water apocalypse, cigarettes would probably be, like, not a very likely candidate for any of that. Because, like, even just a little bit of moisture can ruin a whole shipment of cigarettes because exactly. like, right? you can't smoke wet smokes. Like, it's just. <laughs> and, but they're always, you know, they're always on their boat with like tons of smokes. And there's that whole, there's that scene where they're like driving around throwing, throwing cigarettes, them, yeah. like ha- like handfuls of cigarettes, not even packs. He's just like handfuls of cigarettes. And it, and like, I, I quit smoking about a year and a half ago. And like, I smoked for a fucking long time. And every time I watch that scene, even now, though I haven't, you know, been smoking recently, like, I'm still like, why would you waste cigarettes like that? Like you're just you're just grabbing right. them with your fist and breaking them, and like they're you can't so smoke expensive. That. <laughs> and like people are walking all over them, and like, oh Jesus, you're getting oil on these fucking things. Like that's a plant. That's a, and that's uh, how plant. stale would they be? Because I'm pretty sure water world takes place be? like a couple hundred years yeah, ex- after exactly. after farms are over. <laughs> so if they're, if they're not, if they're not fucking soggy and fucked up, they're stale as shit. Like they probably don't even yeah. taste good. Yeah. But you know, it's, <laughs> you don't smoke because it tastes good or do you? Don't, don't you, <laughs> Mike darling. Don't you? <laughs> it, it smells like, like, you know, when what? you're on the wrong side of the campfire. <laughs> That's an insult to campfires. The, the business end of the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I do not think cigarettes taste appealing same or smell appealing here's the thing don't smoke kids mickey will tell you yeah mickey will tell you don't smoke i I mean mickey will tell you a lot of things it looks it looks super cool (laughs) like we won't we won't mince words and lie to you and tell you that it doesn't look cool because like smoking always looks cool but it's not cool because your lungs (laughs) your lungs need to be healthy (laughs) for you to continue to live hashtag hugs not drugs kids But wasn't that also like, that's also a metaphor for the smokers, right? I mean, they're named after smoking. So I I should hope they have a steady supply of cigarettes, but, um, also giving them cigarettes if they have that addiction is a good way to get them to follow you. That's very true. Yeah. And that's exactly what he was doing. Yeah. But, but the smokers represented everything that we saw wrong in the nineties. Smoking was obviously for like, that's when it first started getting its bad reputation after having a like healthy reputation for most of the century. Yeah. Um, so they, they smoked, they, you know, obviously they're not taking care of themselves, but they also spent fuel. That was when we were talking about global warming and how, how bad fossil fuels were for the, for the world. Um, and they also, you know, obviously killed and didn't care about each other as much. So they were representing all that was wrong with society. Whereas the atollers were mostly, representing everything that was good in society. They were living off the earth. They were um, keeping their numbers down so that they, they would not live in excess or wouldn't, wouldn't need more than they had. Um, and so we, we, that's how we kind of built this dichotomy of, of the good people versus the bad people. And the Mariner was right darn in the middle of it. He was not a good guy or a bad guy. And that's but what I, the movie was about was I, him I, having to like learn to be a good guy. I think I think what what's also there though is that it's not like the smokers are obviously like an on the nose like that's those are bad guys but like the yeah. atollers I don't yeah. think are necessarily good people either because they're they're like full of fucking like bigotry and like the second they figure out that that homie's a fucking mutant they're like oh no 
Like we, we <laughs> wanted, we wanted you to impregnate our women. And then we found out you had gills and now we just want you to die in our poop, poop pool. Like, sorry, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's um, a good point. Yeah. Because, I mean, and, and they're, they're like, obviously like, I think what, what they represent is that just like your average person is like, they're not necessarily evil, but would put in desperate situations. They're just doing whatever they can do to like survive. And so like, that's why when they like, initially they don't know he's a mutant and they're just like, Hey bro, like, why don't you stay here and father a bunch of kids? We like, we need some pure, we need some pure <laughs> fucking, you know, whatever. Um, and then he's just like, you guys don't have anything I want. You're dying. Like he straight up just tells him like, you're dying because they, because right. they are in fact dying because they, they, they know that they can't like keep interbreeding. They have the one right. mango tree and their shit tank and a bunch of boats. And like, that's about and what the they store got. is sold out and There's the store no is like they're out. running out of things. He bought the shelves. Yeah. Also, yo. yeah I was like, he bought like everything. He, yeah. He's like, I'll, I'll take them shelves too. Um, I also don't view the Mariner as a bad guy. I view him as someone that has just been isolated, made fun of, threatened, attacked. So, like he hasn't had good positive experiences yeah. with people. So he has trust issues. Yeah. He's, he's the, the ultimate neutral in the beginning. He's a loner. Yeah. Like he's, he's not, he's not good or bad. He just, he's only worried about himself. Because he's but, the only other person also, that has worried also, about himself. Yeah, we also don't know his past, though. That's that. I think that's the critical thing is like we don't know anything about where he came from or why he feels this way, other than that he just he has been continually rejected by, by you know what's exactly left of society. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If I was constantly rejected, I don't think I would want to go ahead and introduce <laughs> me, like meet new people and do things like that. Or you get to know someone and then they're like, "No, screw you. You have this thing that's different. Like, nah, you're out. Let's murder you." I, I <laughs> right. would definitely have trust issues and just be by myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's almost like, like in the movie is about different cults, right? So the, the atoll, they have their own cult and their, their cult includes don't allow anyone in who's different. Um, the, the, the deacon is like a religious figurehead on the boat. Um, he, he, admires old St. Joe, who is Joe Hazelwood, who was actually the captain of the Exxon Valdez when it crashed and created one of the biggest oil spills of history. But he he sees him as a deity and he is like the priest connecting the deity to the rest of the smokers. And I'm really interested in why the um, the comic books chose to call the to call this new big bad the Leviathan. Because that's another biblical res- reference, and I wonder if there's like an like an anti-religion theme that's kind of in Waterworld. Because obviously, in a lot of post-apocalypse stories, religion is like the bad guy. Look at um, the Book of Eli; like religion yeah. was seen as so bad they actually burned all religious texts. And the the movie is about trying to restore at least one of them. So, do you guys see anything like any kind of continuing religious themes happening in this new Waterworld series? I mean, if it's working for them, I definitely see some sort of religious thing going on, especially with where we're at right now, like where our world's at. I can see that being part of the bad guy or the enemy of let's focus on this thing. Not the enemy, but just something that's not super appealing to a lot of people, but there's people that follow (laughs) it or super culty about it. And this is what we are. And if you don't follow us, you're against us. Like, yeah, I can see that being a part of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I feel like that it's just an easy villain trope to work with is the like the false messianic thing, whether that's right. the, like the deacon or Leviathan or, or whatever. Like if if you can make like a big bad that focuses, you know, on this like person that's like I will, you know, his followers believe that he'll save them somehow or, or maybe not save them, but the, like the, they will they will gain some sort of something from following them whether it's you know right. uh, uh absolution or eternal life or you know dry land or it's always some like mythical kind of thing it, it sort of reminds me of um the uh Setite cultists the the james earl Jones char- jones character in conan the barbarian like the old shitty arnold schwarzenegger conan the barbarian because that that's that's you know he's like their snake god and and they're all just like oh yeah chop off my head and sacrifice me because i like it will you know take me to the snake paradise or whatever um it's it's just i it, for me it's it's i think it's sort of lazy writing but it's a super easy villain trope to just be like yeah dude like this guy is like he's fucking david koresh <laughs> over here and he's gonna lead you into the sunset and then the feds are gonna show up and burn your complex down or something. It might be lazy writing, but it also works, especially because it gives people that 
you can either identify with the religious aspect of like, why are you being so stupid? Why don't you just follow this guy? He's going to help you. And well, then people yeah, that are like, yeah, yeah, no, I that's, did that. That's, that's, <laughs> it, it, that's, that's the lazy part about it. You're using it. They're using it because it's easy and it works. Like people are always like, oh yeah, cool. cool. Like, this, is, this is the bad guy. Why reinvent the wheel? Yeah. Why indeed. <laughs> because right, erosion. So- so I, I also want to talk about um, who is going to be in this because they're talking about doing this the same characters twenty years later. Jack I Black. believe there's a good Jack chance Black is gonna, he's going to play all the characters. It's going to be like a Mike Myers movie with nothing but Jack Black. I love it. That, that I think that could work. You know, I think they'll definitely bring Jack if Jack Black is willing. I think they will definitely bring him back at least for a cameo wouldn't. here and there. Um. But okay, I don't see why he wouldn't. Here's what here's what I'd love to see for Jack Black being included. Like the everyone's on the island. We have our new society there, but then he just comes like crawling up the sand. <laughs> he's all burnt. And he's just shit. like, hey, hey, hey guys. <laughs> anyone anyone got a smoke? Baka waka. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, he because he's Jack Black, he's just like, I can be a good guy too. And he's he's just he joins them. Yeah. I yeah, didn't exactly. know. I didn't, I didn't, yeah, I didn't know. know. All I, the deacons yeah. did, it was all oh, the deacons fall. Another play. Walk, walk <laughs> I play music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think there's also a really good chance that um like Helen and Enola could be played by the same people. Oh, 100%. Um, to, what's it what's right? her name? Yeah, uh, Tina Tina Majorino or uh, That's right. That's her name. She she was in fucking Napoleon Dynamite. She was Deb. She was also in Grey's yeah. Anatomy. Yeah. So she yeah, yeah she's, she's yeah. still acting. She's great. Like I she's hope she comes and, back. and it would it would be perfect because she would be like the appropriate age range for like an elder Enola. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, um, Jeanne Triplehorn who played Helen is, I believe she's still out there working. Let me see. Yep. She's still working. So she could definitely be part of it. The unfortunate thing is, um, enforcer played by RD call. Um, he was another one of the survivors on the Island at the end of the movie. Uh, it looks like he passed away in 2020. So unfortunately though, if they d- decide to include his character, they'll have to recast that one. Um, and of course, our big one here, Kevin Costner playing the Mariner, who at the end of Waterworld gets a new boat and he heads back out to sea. Is there any chance Kevin Costner will make an appearance on this Waterworld sequel series? Maybe because he invested so much of himself <clears throat> into it. But also, I don't think I've really seen him in TV. He does, I, of course. He He's in um, he's in Yellowstone. He's a TV actor. Now. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, I don't have yet. I don't um, have Yellowstone. Yeah, I, I yeah, personally, been, he, I think that they probably won't because they probably won't be able to like want to. They probably won't want to pay him what he wants. And here's here's what I predict. They, you know how they made um, they God they have that uh, it's the Silence of the Lambs spinoff that that just came out, <laughs> and it's but Bridget. it's it, it's it's uh, about what oh God what you know what I'm talking about. It's the one about yeah, what's the name Clarice. Oh, I thought you. Were, I thought you were talking about Hannibal. No, 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 no. It's the newest Clarice? one. It's about, it's about Clarice. And, and they, because Ooh. they didn't get the rights to, to the actual story, Hannibal Lecter is not in it, even though it's like, it's like <laughs> about Clarice yeah. after, like after the fact. And it's like about her, like psychological trauma and shit because of the whole silence of the land. Oh, wow. thing. And, but, but because they didn't get the rights to the story, they can't actually have the character Hannibal Lecter in it, which is, which is just like silly as fuck to me. But, but I can totally see them doing the exact same thing where they're like, Oh, we wanted to have, Kevin Costner in this, but we couldn't afford it, or we didn't have the rights to it, or whatever. <laughs> I mean, or they Kevin could Costner just give like, him producer credit. I mean, if it they could just, be just I mean, they don't want to pay it, but, but they're like, yeah. But I mean, but you know, you know what I mean. Like, I feel like they're just gonna they're, they're gonna be like, well, the Mariner's off doing the Mariner things because the the first mo- the movie was about the Mariner, and now th- this new thing is about you know. It, I, I, here's what my prediction is: it's gonna be Tina Majorino yeah. as Enola, and she's gonna be like the the tribal leader of. Like the island people, like the Everest Island people, and they're gonna have to come up against, you know, something, you know, probably coming from the sea. What, like the 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 what was the group you were talking about in the bubble? The American, the, the remnants of the American government or whatever. Oh yeah, Le- 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 the, the fo- children. The of foundation? Le- no, the foundation. Oh yeah, the foundation. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. So like, it it it, it seems to me like it would be more prescient and relevant in this this day and age to make like the main protagonist, like a, like a, uh, like a woman leader of some sort. And they did like Tina Majorino, Tina Majorino would be perfect for that. 
Because obviously she's well, like... they have statues you know, of the Mariner? They'll probably have... <laughs> I bet you they'll have some sort of, like... Uh, it'll be like a, a be representation great. of of the ship, you know, the Bert, the, his his Bert ship. Yeah. It'll be like a, a you know statue of that or some shit. Um, I I just I predict that the story will be a lot less about the Mariner as a protagonist and a lot more about the survive like Helen and Enola. Oh yeah, surviving on the yeah. island. The the only thing with that is I I don't know if Waterworld works without at least the participation of one mutant because. That is oh, such I, a that was such a big part. I think, part of I the, think film. The, the the mut the mutants will be there. I just don't think it'll necessarily be Kevin Costner. I, I feel like there's you think be there'll like, be other mutants. There, there, there could be, be there baby mutants. Be. There has to be because that's the that's like the biggest thing that we don't know anything about is is why he was a mutant and how he became a mutant and where where his people were because everyone else talks about like you know the you know Enola finds her parents right. they're dead in the hut and all this shit. Um, but also also. It could have it's, been some procreation going on, though. Right, right. But but here, here's here's my other question: is we don't we still don't even know how Enola got to the atoll. We don't even know how Enola got with Hel- Helen. Like we don't we don't know any. Well, of she that drifted. Story. She drifted in. She drifted. Oh yeah, in. in the in the Ulysses cut, they give a little bit. But yeah, she just drifts in on a on a little raft. Oh, that's oh, that's right. I totally yeah, forgot about yeah, that. Um, no, no, no. Yeah, right, Helen tells right. that story to the yeah. mariner. Uh, the night that he's listening to Which his, is straight um, up, straight his, up like a baby Moses man. allegory. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. 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 So we do know, you know, they, her parents knew they were dying, which, uh, which may, meant that they like made her a little raft and just drift her out to sea, which seems like maybe the wrong thing to do. Yeah. When but there's like I guess land it was her and... best chance. Yeah. Wild horses. Yeah. But I, you know, she. She yeah. would have been, she would have been a baby at the time. So I'm sure, I'm sure, you know, they were like, maybe someone will pick her up. And they probably thought there were a lot of atolls out there. So they got lucky. She drifted into the atoll and uh, got adopted by Helen. That was uh, a and if you haven't seen the situation. Ulysses cut, if you haven't seen the Ulysses cut, you have to see it. There's a whole bunch of like, there's a, you know, yeah. all the weird little, there's, there's plot holes that are get filled. And then of course there are new plot holes that get, <laughs> that get created. Up. Yep. <laughs> yep. You fill yeah. it with just the tip of Everest. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And you don't know, you don't know it's Everest in the original cut. You only find that out in the Ulysses cut, which, which definitely, you know, that was their, um, planet of the apes moment of mm-hmm. they did it. To, yeah. You know, yeah. like, it they was say, it, they all say along. It in, exactly. They, I mean, they give it away right in the beginning that this is not a different planet. Um, because the, the voiceover comes on and says right. in the future. Right. And then it's Earth like the universal logo yeah. dissolves into the water. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But they, yeah, they originally filmed it and they wanted that to be their moment of like, you know, we did this. Um, but before we get too far, I do want to give one hope that Kevin Costner will still be a part of that. Oh, I hope he and, does come for a part. And, and that is that not only has he, you know, kind of come down to earth and like, and he's okay doing like cameos, smaller roles and television, but also um, if, if, um, the Karate Kid TV series, um, Cobra Kai, Cobra Kai is any explanation. It has become so popular oh my gosh. for for like former top tier actors to kind of revise roles yep. mm-hmm. lately. Yep. Like, who would have thought that Ralph Macchio and William Zabka would be like the stars of this new TV series twenty or thirty years after their films? Yeah, right. But yeah, I th- I think that there is a chance that Kevin Costner will be on. And good God, he has to realize that. Kevin Costner fans want to see him oh, on this yeah. show. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> even though he's, even though I he's mean, like old as fuck now, a cult it classic. doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. But I but also, it's a cult classic. Like. Exactly. But I do love the idea of modernizing it and letting, letting more women take leads because Waterworld was like men versus men and the women were more or less caught in the middle, um, except in small moments of, of what, what's the word I'm looking for? of power for them. Like they didn't get much power. They were very much treated like commodities. Yeah. Overall. Well, fucking Enola is basically a MacGuffin the whole time. Like she, <laughs> she, she, you know what I mean? She's like, she's like the, the special MacGuffin. item that's like passed yeah. around yeah. and everyone's just like, well, we that's need her the last map. name in the film. Enola MacGuffin. Enola MacGuffin. She's Irish. <laughs> <laughs> it's canon. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. That's factual. Yeah. 
So I'd lo- I would love to see it modernized. And I think you made a really good point that maybe Enola could now be in a leadership role. And of course, oh, I definitely this- think she's in a leadership she has, role. She has to right? be like, you know what I mean? Like who else is going to yeah. take charge of the survivors that are on the island? Here's OK. What about maybe maybe when we saw the Mariner in the original movie, we were only seeing like a snapshot of his like de-evolution into a fish because maybe whatever he ha- whatever gave him gills and webbed feet in the first place, whether it was like a government facility or, or whatever, maybe he was like, we were witnessing him on the downslope of a de-evolution path oh, where like later on, like after- he wasn't born like this. No. And he got, he got infected with so- kind of like, a, a, a um, uh, what is that? Fucking like a teenage mutant ninja turtle. No, uh, yes. I was but, thinking uh, of Wolverine, but I'm like, no, that no, 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 no. What's surgery? That? The Neil yeah. Blomkamp movie, Neil Blomkamp movie with the aliens, fucking Sector Nine or whatever. Oh um, yeah, Dist- oh, District, 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 Nine. District Nine. District Nine. Okay, so yeah. same same concept. What if he was exposed to some sort of like fish mutation shit? Right. And eventually, he's just like turning into some sort of aquatic creature. But we only see him. It's a slow. It's a slow deal, and so we only see him as he's like partway through that that transformation so like the, this 20 years later tv show it's like tina majorino running running the fucking everest island and the you know the tribe that developed on on with the survivors and then the mariner comes back but he's like not the mariner anymore he's like this weird like what if he turns into one of those giant you know <laughs> sea creatures that he was that, catching that would or, be one way where they could continue the mariner character without necessarily needing kevin costner they could just it. use his voice it could just be it could be like yeah. all puppetry or, or, or a sound alike yeah it could just be all like yeah. see, it could be all like a uh, practical puppet effects, and it just be this like big. <laughs> that would be hilarious. And that's just... that's where the street shark shit comes in, man. He's like coming up. He's got his yeah. fucking like ripped up dungarees so... and his fucking Timberlands, and he's like, "What's up? I'm a street shark. <laughs> I'm not a mariner anymore. I don't even need a boat. I fucking swim." So you talking about it just being like, "Oh, it's going getting worse and worse and worse and worse." Are you saying that it could be him turning into like his mutations could be a food allergy from something that he ate? And this what? is what happens. <laughs> I mean, what? No, no, that's not... Where did you get that? I don't know where you got that, but, but yeah. I mean, you I said be... something about like, oh, you he's know... turning into the things that he eats. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if no, this no, no, is, no, no, there's the, a special the, fish no, the, that he the, ate the... and it's a food allergy. No, no, I, I meant, I meant the, the, giant, the giant sea creature that he catches and eats in the middle of Waterworld. He turns it he oh. turns yeah, into one of those. Was... That's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, so he, what if it was a... Yeah, so I'm saying, what if that whole thing is because there's a certain fish that they ate, and then this is a food reaction? Well, then, then, like okay. you ate, then like, Enola and yeah. Helen would have the same problem because they ate that same fish. Well, we don't yeah, know but, what's happening. But, they but could. maybe, <laughs> but may, maybe the mariner got got infected by this government organization so that he's susceptible to changing to this to yeah. whatever he eats. Yeah, I believe that too. Which would also, I mean, their diet would probably be pretty full of like kelp. And seaweed. Dude, that's and why it oysters. Was the, that's like, why their, their that's pretty risky. Pool was the color oh, it was in the atoll. Yeah. Yeah. One, you could turn into a merman. The other, you could turn into like a fungal pool. <laughs> or a reverse merman, merman, where it's just the fish head and then you have regular and people then, legs. And then legs. That's like, uh, oh, shoot. Like, like SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, like SpongeBob. didn't some of the fish have legs on SpongeBob? Sp- I think SpongeBob, so. SpongeBob yeah, they is just in walked fact, around. SpongeBob does in fact take place in the same world that Waterworld does. I don't know. If <laughs> it does. Yeah. He lives. In There's a, even he the lives one island under the sea. Yeah, you're not All right. So outside of a SpongeBob Waterworld crossover. I want I want to know each of your biggest hopes, like the one thing you want this show to include. Interpreter, go first. I'm just really excited to look at the costuming. <laughs> yes, the costuming. <laughs> like I love watching the original Waterworld and getting ideas for uh, the post post apocalyptic event we go to Wasteland Weekend. And so uh-huh. that's what, something that I'm hoping for is like more costuming ideas. Yeah, I do really hope that they keep um, Anola. Just because uh-huh. I love, I love her. She's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, she's an absolute must. I, they, I feel like they could write off everybody else. Uh, to, yeah. to like, you know, they died a long time ago, but Enola has to be included. She has, to, has be. to be included. Yeah. And yeah. she's going to talk to about like, this is how it was. And then I went and talked about the adventures or what her life was outside in the water and how safe it is there. And like, we need to keep this safe. We need to protect our yeah. lands. This is what we need to do. Oh, she, what was the Disney movie about the island uh, with the Mo- rock in it? Moana? Moana. Moana. Yeah. She's like, she's Moana. like a, a Moana character. Yeah. I I'm like into that. it. 
Yeah, so many crossovers. Moana so also crossovers. takes place in the same <laughs> universe. It's my, true. It's just all that the last, same. last island. Yeah, it's all the same. All right, Mickey, what's your must-have for the Waterworld TV series? Um, okay, I'm gonna say this right now, and you heard it here first. Oh gosh, musical number with Jack Black. <laughs> <laughs> like there, there will be some sort of musical number with Jack Black, and maybe Kyle. What Gass do you mean? Come. You so heard like, it here first. From you heard you. it here I first. Said, when I, I said say earlier, this, I, I like play mark music. my words. Like, come on, mark my words. I already planted that seed. <laughs> Wait a second. Did, has Jack Black done like a sea shanty on his uh, TikTok yet? Because he's been very active on TikTok. Oh, I don't know. I don't follow him on TikTok. Yeah. I don't he know, but I hope, like I, sea yeah, shanties he, have been so popular. Jack Black's been so popular. Dude, I think t- a water world. Tenacious, Jack Jack Black Black D shanty. Tenacious D fucking cameo. <laughs> Tenacious D just shows up, and there's like a real quick like they're they're like playing like a like like the camera pans over a crowd on another atoll, and there's just like a stage off to the side where they're like playing a real quick show. And like you don't even say they don't or even acknowledge it. Air it, it just across. happens. They just they just pan across it, and they don't acknowledge it at all. And it's just like, oh wait, that's Jack Black. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, Mickey, we know that they're looking for a writer right now. I think you should uh, throw your hat in that ring. Yeah. Boom. Mickey Bang Bang. I, I know how to write. <laughs> I know how to use a pen. I have two hands. <laughs> At no point will my hands leave my arms. Hopefully. That that was actually a criteria for at some point for writers on Waterworld. They had so many writers. <laughs> <laughs> Must have hands to apply. Must have Must hands. Have yeah. hands. <laughs> well, I, I definitely think um, I want to see what happens on the island. I want there to be a new bad guy. I think the comic books have that covered if they if they stick with that canon. And I absolutely need to know what happens to the Mariner in the future, whether it's played by Kevin Costner or if they have to get a new character, get a new actor to play the character. I want to see where this character goes. So that's my must is just keep telling that story and do it well. And speaking of which, to do it well. Back when uh, Waterworld was created, it was the most expensive movie ever made. I believe it was $180 million, which was a lot of money back then. Now that sounds cheap for- And it was like 80 over budget or something as opposed to only be 100. They went over budget. I know that they called it a flop, but it ended up making a ton of money. Like it's done really well. And it's had the longevity that most blockbusters don't have. Um, But now we have a lot of new techniques to make movies like this. We don't need to have a practical set on the water. We can have a set on a green screen stage. We can go full on um, Star Wars show. Help Mandalorian. Me LED screen. Mandalorian. Mandalorian. I was like the We're, Bad Batch. Just kidding. That's cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can go full on Mandalorian where you have an entire um, digital set that moves with the camera. So it can look really real. And I mean, anyone who's going to knock CGI needs to go back and watch Mandalorian because oh, yeah. it is pretty damn perfect. I mean, also for Waterworld, they've had that show at Universal Studios for how many years now? And they have multiple shows I mean, a day. It's, it's and gotta, it's, but it's, it's got to be practical. But people still sh- no, I know. But I'm saying like for it to be like, oh, it was it was a flop. It's this and that. Like it still has a following. People go to that show every day. It right. does, and, and it, yeah. there's multiple shows a day. Totally. Like there's, yeah. <clears throat> like there's enough people for them to have multiple shows a day. So it's obviously a success. Yeah. But I think for the most expensive, the most troublesome scenes, that's the new CGI effects will come in handy. And I I agree with you, Mickey Bang Bang, where there was a magic to the original water world, the practical sets, the amount of effort that went into it, the art, the, 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 the sheer scope of things. You felt it on screen when when the Trimoran's out in the ocean, you're in the real ocean. Yep. the the atoll was in the real ocean. Of course, the island was right behind it. But. But it felt real because it was real. And I think that there's some magic to that. I would love to see that continued on the TV show. When they go diving, they did that, I believe, at um, Boeing or Northrop. They um, have a huge a huge water tank there that they use for um, the astronaut training and stuff. And they filmed oh, that yeah. there. Uh, my dad or stepmom, I can't remember, one of them um, worked where they filmed it and they were telling me about it. Oh, that's so fun. So, yeah. So, I'm like, that's definitely something that we don't really get anymore because they're like, oh, we have CGI. That's safer cheaper yeah yeah Yeah. and i mean tv shows generally have to be a little bit cheaper but we're also in an age where tv shows sometimes get better budgets than yeah oh yeah Yeah. oh yeah you know and and they do really well and and what's really cool is i think right now we're in a period where tv show storytelling is way better than movie storytelling Mm -hmm. 
Well, they, because they can take they, the time. They have the time. They have the time to make a fucking like a, a serialized arc. Right. Whereas you know, so but many he, with with the old format of, of cable television, everything was episodic, and now now we're in the we're in the age of serial storytelling, and so that's why you exactly. Get, Shows that have bigger budgets than movies because they can tell a story, a serialized story over 10 episodes as opposed to an right. hour and a half, which is. Huge. And that's one of the reasons why these A-list actors are willing to go back to television, which used yeah. to be like taboo. Like there were movie actors, there were TV actors, and then there was everyone else. And but now movie actors actually want to take on TV projects because they get to really dive into their character, take time and evolve rather than just, you know work on something for three months. Now they can work on it for years um, and really flex their muscles. And they keep this, a lot of the seasons that keep or series that keep coming out, it's like between eight to 10 episodes. And so for us as a consumer, it's like, we want more, we want more. Yeah. But as the actor, they're like, yo, I'm confident in that. Like the Bridgerton, the, um, the guy in it was like, I'm, I'm not coming back for season two. I really loved this role. It was temporary. I did this, I did that, all of this stuff. I'm good. And it's, not planning on coming back for season two. And I think that's an awesome thing for actors. It's like, I am in this role. I'm, I'm invested to this. I feel this, I can give it my all and I don't have to come back if I don't want to. <laughs> like, cause yeah, there's shows, there are seasons out there that it's like 22 episodes long. And it, that is like, you're invested. That's right. a long time, but yeah. eight episodes. The other really interesting thing about that. And I'm mind blanking. I'm now stalling to remember what I was just thinking a minute ago. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have it. It's gone. It's gone, guys. So oh, I'm picturing welcome if you to guys. My hell. <laughs> I know. I'm like... <laughs> so I'm picturing the people worshiping. It's like if you ever watched Firefly and the episode of Jane, where they're like, Jane's our hero, and they have the song about Jane coming and yeah. saving them and dropping all that money, but it was an accident. Um, that's what I'm picturing, like part of it being for the mariner, like he's our hero, and it's like, no, he okay. <laughs> Like this also benefited him. <laughs> I remember what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a difference between American um, TV making and like British TV. Making. Oh yeah. And that is American TV making. Look at the office. We try to make a show last as long as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, British TV making, they tell a story and if it works, maybe they'll come back and tell more. And so I'd love to see, because we know this show is getting canceled at some point. It's going to be too expensive. Uh, it's going to it's going to be laughed at from day one by non-believers. Um, we know it's going to get canceled at some point. So I really hope they shape the seasons into concise stories and tell just tell a good story without trying to drag it on. Yeah. Without trying yeah. to leave a cliffhanger, um, you know, and then there's always like another story you can start, even if it's you, you, you can you can continue a story without having to leave a bunch of stuff undone yeah. by the end of a season, which is my point. And I hope that they don't leave us hanging because so many good shows have left us hanging in the past. And I really don't want this to have that to yeah. happen again. Yeah. Uh, Look at, did you guys ever watch Carnival? Oh, yes. On HBO? Oh my God. Yes. Oh, yes. Dude. Like, I, I was left hanging on that shit. Oh, oh yeah. Fuck. Yep. But then and then of, it took yeah. what? 18 three. years for Deadwood to to yeah. wrap things up. Um, and Carnival was, was what, three seasons? And then the third seasons. season I was think, kind of two? Yeah. It was only two. It yeah. Only and it two. felt like and they were building, building, building. They were building and, up. And then the end of the second season is just like, oh, fuck, what? No, there's no more. Yeah. Of this? Yeah. No. yeah. Biggest blue um, balls of TV history. Sa dude, same Steve's um, Dark Matter. Did you guys ever watch that? I no. haven't finished it. Three three seasons of it, and and they like built it. They, they they did some pretty decent world building, you know, some really good, you know, uh, uh, pulpy sci fi, and then it, it just it just like petered out, and they didn't get to any kind of conclusion of anything. Like all the protagonists were doing like all like some really crazy shit, and then it's just like, oh, the show's over. Waka waka. It's like fuck. Are right. you fucking kidding me? Right. Yeah, and and that is there's. It's interesting because all right, so Tribes of Europa, did you guys see that? It came out on Netflix this year. I haven't seen I, it yet. I oh, saw the fantastic. title. I didn't. I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, absolutely watch it. It's brilliant. It's only six episodes though, and I think that's because it was a, a overinflated budget. Um, but the the season ends where the story begins. Like it, you really feel like you're just getting into it, um, and so you you know, unlike Waterworld the movie, that ends at a point where most characters are now in a in a good spot yeah. and the Mariner is just going off for more adventure. Like that is the kind of ending I want out of this TV show is 
is we're back to a good place, but there could be the more. The good place. <laughs> <laughs> the good place is a good show too. <laughs> Sorry. Random thing I did want to clarify. You said you used the office as an example. The office yeah. was actually a British TV show. That's that, what I was saying. Yeah. I was like, Ricky Gervais brought it to the United States. Right. Yeah. yeah. But the, but the, the office in, oh, in yeah. England was one season. They told one story. And then they yeah. ended. Meanwhile, yeah. American TV is like, let's how like, how much money can we make on this? Oh yeah. How how, yeah. how I mean, long can we stretch out fucking uh, Pam and Jim's fucking like prob- exactly. probable relationship? That because that right. shit. Because so, once once the two of them got together, it was like, well, now all the tension for the show is gone, and you got rid of Michael Scott. Exactly. Then you can't even make these. Oh my gosh. Anymore. Right. Yes. Yeah. They, we don't know when to end things, and of course, uh, did you guys notice that the writers of the show ditched when <laughs> when Michael Scott left? Oh, I oh, didn't yeah. notice that. The mm-hmm. beginning of the next season, they were like, oh, we're going to Chicago or whatever. Yeah. They wrote the show. Yeah. I heard that Michael Scott didn't intend to leave. It was more he wanted a raise. And so he they were um, he was like asking for a raise. I was like, well, I'm going to leave. And they called this bluff and then he left. Yeah. I heard something like that, too. Like he was waiting. Like his contract was coming up. Yeah. And he was waiting for them to like ask him to come back <laughs> and <laughs> to yeah. stay on. And they just didn't. <laughs> and it just fell apart. And if you ever watch um, interviews with Ricky Gervais where it's uh, or like there's award shows where it's Ricky Gervais and then Steve Carell comes out and like Ricky just talks mad smack on him all the time. Like it was our cash cow. You ruined it. And it's like, funny. you could have just thrown money at like the American way is just throw money at the situation. And then. Right. (laughs) It's interesting, too, because the office got really popular on streaming. Mm -hmm. But but while it was on TV, it never really had a huge following. It it was right. it came later yeah. during on demand viewing that it became such a huge hit. And they almost canceled it after the first season, but um, I can't. Remember, someone was like, "No, just stick with it. Just stick with it." Yeah. And they convinced them to stick with it, and then it turned yep. into what it was. Yeah, good thing yeah. it was a cheap show to start with. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, no right? shit. There's, there's special <laughs> oh, yeah. effects budget on that thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, a two person camera crew. Um, you know, most of the actors hadn't really hit their breaks yet. And there was um, also a, less, a lot less people the first episode than there were um, in this, like after the pilot was a lot smaller crew. Than oh, this. totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah, let's hope that, um, that they do a good job in the storytelling. That's all. That's all I'm saying there. I really hope that Waterworld does not turn into Dexter, where it's like, yo, stop. <laughs> Don't even get me started about Dexter. Stop. Dude, that. Oh, God, like, I you were cool until season three. Like, after Jesus season three, Christ. like, why did you keep going? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that that's, show, that's true. Like, and I, and that, dude, that dude's voice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you guys know what I'm talking I'll about? That dude's me. voice. He's, like, he's always talking. Oh, yeah. Like, no. I'm like, what the fuck, oh, yeah. man? Get a lozenge. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> he had cancer. Wait, for real? In real yeah. life? Yeah. I, didn't, I mean, I don't know if that actually affected his did you voice just make, or not. Did no, you just he make had... fun of a guy with throat cancer? Yeah. I don't oh know where his God, cancer was. I? It might have been in his it might have been in his I pinky, thought, I but he had cancer. Bad, I thought it was just a bad <laughs> acting choice, like like uh Christian Bale in fucking Batman. I thought it because that, that's what it always reminds me of is like the Batman voice. I'm like, why are you talking like this? That's like, a totally fuck, iconic dude. Batman voice. Yeah. That's a really I think he might have had testicular cancer, but still the cancer, like you can't make fun I mean, of that does. Cancer. I guess that does have a possibility <laughs> of affecting your voice. <laughs> yeah. Screaming anyway. at doctors all day. I don't know if he yelled at them or I don't, I don't actually know what kind of care he had. Obviously it was good because he's still alive, but. <laughs> well, there is this thing in, in TV and movies where microphones have gotten so good. Oh yeah. Versus what they used to be. Yeah. That actors will literally Maybe they can auto tune his voice for you. They'll literally just just whisper so that you can't even hear them, but it makes them sound really badass in the movie. <laughs> Especially when they have to go back and ADR all those scenes anyway. Yeah. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah. So I should just whisper from now on. No, don't whisper, just talk really quiet. Not, I'm like not people, a whisper. I mean people people don't listen to me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> logical and i don't blame them <laughs> that'd be amazing. all right next time we're at wasteland weekend I, I need you to scream at me from the other side of the street but use your whisper voice okay and then i'll just keep getting closer and closer and closer you'll be like i'm i'm gonna scream whisper the shit out of you at wasteland <laughs> scream that, whisper i love it why does that feel a little provocative and a little scary <laughs> it is 100 percent. all these things why do i have a confusion fear boner <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, I think it's about time to wrap it up. Any last thoughts before we go? Jack Black. Are we going to watch the first episode? We should uh, all watch the first oh, episode together. Yes. 
oh, deal. Let's do it. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm into in, that. In 2027, when this show finally comes out. <laughs> That's right. You guys are stuck being my friends till then. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. But yeah, that sounds great. It's on. Done. And yeah. Mickey, any last thoughts from you? Um, yeah, you know, I really hope this is totally off topic, but of all things, I hope we with stayed the on topic the whole time with, with, with the merchandising for this fucking show. I hope that what comes out of it is I, I want to be able to buy a can of meat, you know, like the fake, the spam. <laughs> yeah. The spam that they had. I, I want that. Like they need to merchandise the cigarettes that the smokers use and the fucking, <laughs> and the, the, the canned meat, the smeat. Like I'll okay. So think if, if they make the meat, you know that there's going to be a vendor at Wasteland that does that. Yeah. Oh, there, <laughs> well, I there already that should there's, be. There's already yeah. people, we have no, there, die. There's already people that take the like the spam cans and print fake labels that say meat on them. Oh yeah. But like, but like, yeah. I want, I want like the fucking like official screen accurate fucking meat. And like, I want to know what you want to try meat. I want to yeah. try meat because it wouldn't be spam. Because I, I guarantee that it tastes different than spam, just according to my brain. That's this. Now, oh yeah. If it tastes worse than spam. Would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Because obviously, smeat is not spam. Like spam is held sp- in high regard. I like spam. I like spam too. <laughs> spam <laughs> masubi. That's what I'm saying. This? Yeah, that's spam what I'm saying. is. Um, that's what I'm saying. Is is spam like you know you can I, get yeah, a spam I feel, sandwich? I feel like, I feel like across smeat, the United States. I feel like smeat is like spam with like extra like it's like mustard flavored spam or something like it's something weird. Ooh, you know what I mean? Good. Yeah, yeah. It's like the spam you buy at the ninety nine cent store, but you get like fifteen cans of it. But yeah, but it, it has like something <laughs> extra. It has like a little bit of you know something extra in it that you're not quite sure what it is, but it's. It's probably my. I love it. it. It doesn't bother having an expiration date on it because you're well, fuck, good to go. Fuck, it's no. like it's all it's like all salt. It's just all preservatives. It's it like totally... the meals you get in the military. I can't think of what they're called. The oh, MREs. MRE. Yeah, it's yes. like an MRE. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey, it totally makes perfect sense to me that your biggest hope for this is that you get to have a canned meat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, yeah. Are you going to eat questionable <laughs> meat? <laughs> Hi, I'm Mickey Bang Bang. Have we met before? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mickey Bang Bang. I put questionable things in my mouth. I mean, that's, that's a me. day. <laughs> <laughs> what, what? Let's talk about oh the tip God. of much more. All right, guys. <laughs> Everest, well, Everest, um, sorry. <laughs> this has been our report on the very few rumors of a brand new TV show coming out that's going to continue the story of Waterworld, which was, I think, all of our one of all of our favorite movies of all time. Yeah. Do you guys do you guys agree? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. I I've seen I Waterworld. Us. I was like, yeah, where's everybody else agreeing? I'm like, oh, they'll listen to this later. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh Waterworld has always been one of my top. I would say it's the one I've seen the most out of all post apocalypse movies, which is Oh, oh yeah, same. We, Part same. We, Part back, same. Back in back in college we had a VHS that we like it was the house favorite. And like me and my roommates, we just watched yes. it. It was always in the VCR. I, I th- we eventually destroyed that tape because we watched it so much. Like that's I love it. Yeah. Yeah, and, I watched um, it for Wasteland Inspiration. Yeah, right? I mean, we have a swimsuit contest, which is... We do. Uh, it used to be on a D stage, um, but now it's going to be at the Atoll. It's going to be at... No, uh, um, the Outpost. Yeah. Oh, the, the Atoll. Yes, yeah, thank the you. Atoll is what a waste that does the karaoke. The Outpost is a uh, faceless merchant. Right, but it is... It's Gregor's Tower from the Atoll. So yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are interested in um, cosplaying some Waterworld stuff, you should definitely check out Wasteland Weekend because there is a whole Waterworld corner out in the desert. It's like the whole world went deluge and then dried up. That's how we kind of fit it into the Wasteland world. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let us know your thoughts about what you think this Waterworld TV show is going to be like. If you have any predictions, um, put them in the notes. Um or, or leave a comment, definitely leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the show wherever you are. Um, and let's see, I guess we're about wrapping it up. So say goodbye, guys. Say goodbye, goodbye guys. guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends. If you hated it, share it with your enemies. And your friends. Along- <laughs> and if you and, hate uh, us, share it with your enemies and your friends. <laughs> They can make fun of us. It's fine as long as you listen. <laughs> yep. And they, they do. I, I just got a comment about my hair in a recent it's uh, YouTube post. Man. I love your hair. I think they're convinced that it's a hair piece. 
but Ooh. it's not. It's it's one hundred percent real mine. I just think something different about it. Like it is a hair piece. You should yeah. like face, well, that's, I face guess, that it is a hair piece. It was a very very over. poofy that day. <laughs> I think he thought it was a hair piece, and I was like, I don't even know what to say about this because it was ridiculous. Let's get that out of the way. <laughs> it looked ridiculous. More ridiculous uh, than Mickey Bang Bang right now. <laughs> I you um, know. You asked me last exactly. episode, what, you were like, hey, Mickey, what, what product do you put in your hair? And I'm like, nothing, nothing but like stress and sweat. Spite. Like, yeah, this Anger. is. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And it just holds. You don't even like Beaker. It's just, yeah. He does look like Beaker. Um, oh, do he, the, do this thing where you can just see. <laughs> what? It's Beaker. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> All right, guys, let me get out of this. Sorry. Okay. Guys, if you enjoyed today's episode, share it with your friends. If you hated it, share it with your enemies and send it along with a canned meat, only known as Smeat. <laughs> See you in hell, nerds! <laughs> well, that was angry. I don't have enough sunscreen for that. <laughs> That's it for this week, survivors. Stay alive. Oh, and before I forget... Uh, I'm on vacation next week, so there's not going to be an episode next week. Um, However, I will do my best to get back to it. So I'll see you guys in a couple weeks. And um, till then, stay alive. Hey, survivors. Makeshift here to remind you that the Apocalypse Post is brought to you in no small way by our Patreon supporters. Join the ranks for early access and exclusive content with support levels now named for fancy Fallout-ridden factions like the $2 per creation Drifter or the $7 Wastelander. Knowing you've got my back has helped me dedicate more time to this channel, spreading love of the post-apocalypse, and less time on stupid real-world stuff. Sign up right now at patreon.com slash theapocalypsepost.